I know what it's like to be stuck. Today, I'd like to share with you a lifetime of experience where I've been trying to understand the condition of what I call stuckness. Being stuck is when your mind and body are functioning separately. It's like living your life with your emergency brake on. It has been my great pleasure for over 40 years to be a student of Koichi Tohei Sensei, who in 1953 brought the martial art of Aikido from Japan to this country. Indeed, the kimono that I'm wearing today is from another one of my teachers, Iwao Tamura Sensei. When, Tamao, when Tamura Sensei passed away, he was the most senior student and instructor in Japan of Koichi Tohei Sensei. And his widow, Mrs. Tamura, was kind enough to bestow upon me Tamura Sensei's formal kimono, which I wear today in his honor. <clears throat> you know, the art, the art of Aikido is really quite simple. When you are completely relaxed, your mind and body are naturally one. And what I'd like to do is use some examples today from the martial art of Ki Aikido to give you an experience so that you can understand what I'm talking about, the difference between your mind and body being separate and your mind and body being one. So I'm going to give you an image to make that more clear. Suppose I was out here and you said, you know what, David's going to come out here and talk about sweetness. But can you imagine a life where you've never tasted anything sweet before? And I'm supposed to give you a lecture and like, oh, help you understand it? Well, how about this? What if I just took one of these, an M&M, gave it to each and every one of you in the auditorium, said, plop that baby in your mouth. You do that, you go, whoa, that's nice. I have that experience. That's my goal today. But what I'm going to do is to try to give you some tools I'm going to actually work with some of you uh, participants from the audience to help us to reach that state. Anyway, that's my goal. All right. Um, what is being stuck, right? Let's define that first. It could be something really simple. You don't always feel relaxed and calm when you're making an important decision. Or maybe you feel that you've lost control. Others have all the control around you. Maybe you feel like a victim. Or this one looks more like <laughs> road rage or something. This is just the condition of being angry. So to start this, if you would please, I want you to look at me like this gentleman. And just in your imagination, because I want you to get in a state, look at me as if you're really, really mad at me. Oh, good. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> all right, yeah, all of you, whoa, yeah. So you're really mad at I've harmed you. I've wronged you. Just do that for just a second, OK? And then stop. Examine your state. Isn't it the case that you've come up slightly out of your chair? Isn't it the case that maybe your shoulders are slightly tense? Maybe some tension in the back of your neck? Many of you I saw, even though the lights are bright, your forehead becoming really wrinkled. And how about your vision? Did I become kind of the, the target of your tunnel vision and you lost sight of the people around you? This is an example of the physiological and emotional condition, which is essentially being stuck. All right. This is an extreme case because you're angry, but this one might be more <laughs> something you can relate to where you feel like everyone else has control at work, where we spend so much of our time. All right. How did this happen? Why is it we get stuck? Well, guess what? Stuckness is hardwired in us. It's actually in our biology. I can make the point very simply by talking about your daily life experience. How hard is it for you to change basic behavior? How many of you have ever said, I'm going to lose weight and keep it off? Raise your hand. Good. <laughs> okay. How many of you said, I'm going to stick to that exercise program? I made that New Year's resolution. Boy, I'm going to stick to it. Good, good. How about, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to manage my time differently so I can spend more time at home with the, ooh, a lot of parents out there are doing that one. Or how about you athletes? I'm going to like change my swing, change my shot. I'm going to do something to take my game to the next level. In all those examples, was it easy or hard? Hard, of course. So I have another theory. We are all addicted. You know what we're addicted to? The way in which we've always done things. <laughs> and one of those addictions is the habit of separating your mind and body together. Right? That's the problem. So I'm going to give you a solution image that I'm going to work with for this talk. Consider an iceberg. Take a look at that iceberg. There's two parts to it. The top half of the iceberg is the part you can see. And notice it's the smaller part. That's your physical body. So you can look at me and say, OK, I have you know, a pretty small physical body. But your mind is the part that's below the surface of the water. You can't see the mind. Can you see my mind? No. And I can't see yours either. 
but we know we have one. So here's the thing. When we talk today about living our life by design, what I would like to share with you is it's truly possible to live your life with your mind and body coordinated, and that would be like using the full power of your iceberg every single day rather than being stuck. All right, something about this that deserves uh, some attention here. Guess what? Even though we tend to be in the habit of separating our mind and body, I can share with you a realization that, you know what? Your mind and body is always one. You just don't pay attention to it. It's unconscious. I'll give you an example. How many of you are thinking right now about your heart beating? Don't have to. How about your lungs going in and out? How about your blood circulating? How about cells that are growing and decaying in your body at, at all times? And you don't have to think about that. So if you think about it like this, hmm, something's going on where my mind and body is unified unless I create conditions to be stuck and therefore not operate at my peak performance level. How about this? I'm a philosopher. I'll take it even further. I would propose to you, you know what? Not only is your mind and body one, you're one with the universe. It's like, whoa. That sounds heavy, right? But think of it very basically, like the examples I've been giving. How long can you live without food? The experts say about 30 days. Think of it. So you have to get something from outside yourself, energy, to simply sustain your body. If you're not doing that on a regular basis, you cease to exist. How about this? How long can you live without water? Three days. Ready for this one? You know where I'm going? <laughs> How long can you live without air? If you're not exchanging food, water, and air at all times, that's your connection to the universe itself, but it goes unnoticed. So what's the significance of this? The significance is, in daily life, you are the ones that cause tension and separation, that cause you to be stuck by walking around with a worldview that we're all separate. It's me versus you, us versus them. Or here's a big one, employees versus management. It's like there's tension in everything we do, but it's a, it's a frame of reference that I think we're addicted to that we carry around with us. All right, let's see if we can make this more clear by doing some physical examples, kind of some kinesthetic things. I'm going to ask for some help from uh, people from the audience here that have been kind enough to volunteer, or voluntold, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> This is my friend Derek, we just met today, but I want you to imagine now, Derek's a big guy, I said, wow, you, you are a big guy. I, 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 said, I said, can we get a big guy? All right, I want you to imagine, I've, I put up the skeleton here. I want you to imagine Derek as a skeleton right now. Well, guess what? The weight of Derek's body is susceptible to the laws of gravity, just like this clicker. So that means when Derek stands relaxed, the physiological center of his body is about three and a half inches below his navel. And by the way, it's the same for all of us. Do you see this pelvic girdle? Notice how it's like a bowl shape. The purpose of that part of your anatomy is to support the upper weight of your body. So here's what I'm, where I'm going. I'm going to ask Derek to concentrate on the physiological center of his body. And, and I want you guys to do this as well, OK? So first, everyone, uh, go up on your toes, softly down. Very good. OK, now with your inside arm, I'm just going to touch Derek's sternum right here and say, Derek, I want you to keep thinking right here. So everyone think about your center, right? And I'm just going to give him an experience. I'm pressing not hard, but I'm pressing in this direction. Do you feel stable? Yeah. He, he, he's like a rock. He's extremely stable. Very good. OK, now the only variable I want to make this a fair experience is stand the exact same way, Derek, but just think on the very top of your head. You can even touch the top if you want, like you're getting a haircut, you're combing your hair, whatever. But keep your, keep your mind right up there. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, it's very powerful. Try this at home when you do this with somebody else. Because here's the deal. Remember when I asked you to, to, a minute ago to sit there and look at me with anger? Do you think when you're stuck, do you think in daily life, when you have fear, tension, and anxiety, do you think it's more likely your worldview is kind of up here, or do you think it's nice and down here? Of course, it's up here. So guess what? You now know those conditions where you're not operating to the best of your ability. When you feel stuck, guess what? Your weight is coming up. Your, your mindset is coming up. It's like separating the two halves of your iceberg. 
All right, here's what we're going to do. It's very powerful, okay? Derek, just help me because we're, we're doing time management here. All right, I'm, now I'm going to do the same thing. So to show you how powerful this is, I'm going to keep one point. Okay, we say iten in Japanese, or say no iten ni kokoro shizume totsu suru. It just means keep one point. <laughs> it's fun to say in a crowd. Okay, <laughs> okay, just push. Push more, 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 harder, harder. He's a big guy, but why is it I'm not moving? Okay. It's creepy. <laughs> it could get creepier. <laughs> How much time do we have? No. Okay. So he's pushing really, really hard, but I'm just relaxed talking to you like it's no problem. Do you know why? Because I'm just, <laughs> I'm just keeping one point. Yeah. It's possible for you to do. In fact, Derek, I won't show you anything that I can't teach you in five minutes. Okay. You're a big guy. You did really well. Just think here. Now to help you, I am going to do this gradually. So I'm going to push. Okay, you're doing great. So keep thinking here. Many people, they, they tend to think about my hand, but don't do that. <laughs> you're doing it already. You know what it is? It's counterintuitive. All I had to do is show him what's possible, and his mind shifted. It's like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> All right? All right, you did that so well. I'm going to take it to another level, because let's back up so you don't hit that speaker. OK, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> there, there was a reason why we went last. <laughs> All right, all right, here, I'm pushing really hard. Okay, Derek, walk forward. Okay, here's what happened. And by the way, all of you would have done what my friend Derek just did. All right, so you press again. Go ahead, press hard. Okay, kimono has many layers. <laughs> okay, push hard. And then say, David, walk forward. David, walk forward. Okay, Derek's style is this. What happened? Where did my mind go? Guess what? It, that's the habit of separating your mind and body. My mind, Derek's mind, went to the one place that I was holding him. But look at this. OK, push hard, push hard, push hard. Get this. He's not holding my legs. Push really hard. And then say, David, walk forward. David, walk forward. OK. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you have to change your concept to understand how you can use your whole iceberg. All right? Try that again. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this was going to be fun. All right, Derek, you're here. Okay, I want you to end on it. You know, my teacher always says, make sure they do it correctly. Okay, now just walk forward. Exactly. Yeah, I can't. Imagine, I'm this puny little guy. I can't hold you back. All right, let's do one more exercise. OK, everyone, you can try too, OK? I want you to hold your right arm out straight, really tight. Use all your muscles. That's why, I, look at that. Oh, you're huge. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Put one hand here on the wrist, one hand here, and I'm going to try to put his thumb on his shoulder. No, you, resist. All your strength. Real tight, tight. All your muscles. All right, so he's much bigger than I am, and I can't, even though I've got two arms, he's huge, but I just wanted him to experience like an M&M. &M. Okay, that's, that's hard, all right? Now you do me. Okay, go ahead, real hard, and I'm going to try to resist with my body. Go ahead, push hard. Yeah. Ah, did you hear that pop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now I'm going to do it again, relaxed. Okay, use all your power as hard as you can. Go ahead. One, two, three, go. Bend my arm. Use, use your legs. Use your hips. <laughs> OK, what's happening here? I'm not participating. <laughs> it feels weird, doesn't it? All right, but I already told you I, will not I, won't, I won't show you something I can't teach you. All right, here's the image I was using. OK, all of you do this. When you hold out your arm, I want you to imagine that the back wall is on fire. OK, and just like this picture, your one point now, Derek, is like a fire hydrant. And water is gushing out your arm, so much so that with your fingers, you can spray the black wall. Exactly. Now, probably, that's right. Yeah. Now, it feels like I'm not even pressing on you, right? You know why? Because he's not pressing back. It's not you versus me, us versus them, employees versus management. If you just change and accept how connected you already are, amazing things develop. All right, let's thank Derek and the others. <laughs> okay, so let me show you.
you know, when we do this, he's doing the same exercise. This is Rich, by the way. He's an Aikido person. Um, so I can just be very relaxed. You know, the normal everyday mindset is, oh, I have to throw him. It's martial arts. So then I get in here, and I'm going right against where he's holding me. That's what Derek did when he walked right into my hand. But what if I'm unstuck, and I move from my whole iceberg? All I'm doing is respecting his opinion. He was going with all that direction, so why not say, oh, OK. <laughs> You know, here's daily life, okay? He's the boss, I'm the employee, or husband, wife, friend who's become en enemies. He's pushing as hard as he can, but what if I just, I'm gonna keep one point, use this unbendable arm. He's pushing, pushing, pushing. I can feel like, oh, well, I feel very good, but I'm also stuck. If I really wanna move through life without conflict when I'm faced with a problem like this, why don't I become unstuck and do this? You know what he did? He stopped pushing. Do you know why? I wasn't there. <laughs> you can't push against something that's not there, right? So it's very simple. In daily life, he's pushing. But you know, just to, to think about this in psychological terms, you know what he really wants? He wants to be understood. So if I do this, he's probably thinking, oh, now my partner, I can use my words, I can validate, I can say, I get it. And you know what will happen? He probably thinks, Oh, that's pretty cool. Because now, guess what? Now both of us are able to share a perspective. This is real conflict uh, avoidance. You know, this is a basic art. Uh, we call it Katate Kosodori Kokinage. It's the most basic art in Shinshin Toots Aikido. So if you come, okay, all I'm doing is respecting his power. If he comes again, don't move. Just move with him, right? Say. Shomenuchi, just move. Yes, or it's keep, maybe front punch. That's it, and hop. So all I'm doing is getting out of the way. He comes, I say thank you very much. Let's go this way. You okay? Okay. <laughs> a small demonstration. Okay, now so daily life, what does this mean for daily life? We started out saying, when you go through life, you're very, very busy, but often you feel stuck. What we learned in these exercises, you can remove the stuckness in your own mind and begin to live your life with the full power of your iceberg. I'll give you three examples. At home, in athletics, and at work. At home, shouldn't we be the best we can be with our loved ones? But think of it. Isn't it the case the most trivial arguments, the most trivial misunderstandings, that when you complete the other person's uh, sentences before they've finished and it turns out your answer is wrong? <laughs> you know, this is daily life. But what if you were to choose, instead of being stuck, as soon as you feel your, your center rising, as soon as you feel that tension, wouldn't it be great in a, in a nanosecond you can say, boom, keep one point, and your whole world changes. You become calm, relaxed, you see clearly. How many people does it take to have an argument? So what if you choose not to participate in being stuck and be willing to move to adopt and understand what the person is really thinking or doing, and they're probably gonna be likely to do the same for you. How about this in athletics? Last example, last sweetness exercise. Hold out your hand as tight as you can. Just stick it out like that. Oh, you're a great audience, thank you. And shake it as fast as you can. I see there's a lot of frustrated athletes. Okay, good. Now relax your hand, shake it as fast as you can. Which is faster? Of course. Well, guess what? I have a surprise high school physics slide. <laughs> right? Can you change the mass of your hand? Can you change the acceleration of your hand? Yes. That's why. You know, peak performing athletes, they understand speed and power is also a function of relaxation. And when you're completely relaxed, your mind and body are one. Finally, work. The average life expectancy is 27,500 days. You're gonna spend a half to two thirds of those days at work. Why not choose to be a, a positive vehicle for change? 
In a big business, there's many perspectives, and you always have the opportunity, instead of being stuck, to say, let me understand finance, merchandising, operations, human resources, or if it's a school or a government. There's an always opportunity for you to make a difference. And as long as you're gonna spend your life at work, why not choose to make it like church, the temple, the synagogue, and as an opportunity to be the very best you can be? I'd like you to leave one thought, or I would like you to, uh, I would like to leave giving you one thought. You know, I've been teaching this stuff for a long time, but the older I get, the more I think, here's an idea worth spreading. Wouldn't it be great if every elementary school child, every high schooler could learn an option rather than becoming hardwired to be stuck, to actually learn these basic principles that are so easy to understand and give everyone an opportunity to truly live their life by design. Thank you very much.